Today I've got a classic dessert, the rum baba. Very simple, these ingredients you'll find at home in your cupboard. So to start the batter you need fresh eggs, little unsalted butter that's been chopped, it must be hard and firm from the fridge, a little natural honey and some fresh natural yeast. So the first step, take the cold diced butter into the pan, place it over a low heat, just so it melts slowly. What you want to avoid is creating any lumps in the batter, so you need a good sized bowl, a nice uh, balloon whisk and a plastic spatula. Crack the eggs into the bowl. Next, add the honey. So first of all, whisk the eggs together with the honey. Next, I've got some yeast here. This crumbles straight from the fridge, okay? So just break it up with your fingers into the bowl and whisk this together as well. A pinch of salt goes next. Notice I'm whisking from side to side, almost in a figure of eight there. That's pushing the mix against the side of the bowl, which is breaking down the yeast as well. Once that's beaten together, slowly add the flour. So a good tip is just to add a little at a time. And while you're adding that, whisk it in. By adding a little at a time, it's going to prevent any lumps appearing in the batter. My flour has also been passed through a, a sieve as well at the beginning. Now if all goes wrong and you find that your batter has lumps in it, and rather than throwing the mix away, simple remedy, take the batter, pass it through a fine mesh sieve, a pudding sieve, and use a spatula to scrape it through. And you know that's going to knock out any lumps. So see how flexible this is. It means it'll go a nice, smooth, consistent batter, just dropping off the edge of the whisk. The last step for the batter is to add the melted butter, making sure the butter itself is not too hot. Room temperature around 22 degrees is fine. Just a little bit at a time. So all the butter's in there, and that's it finished. You can see it's nice, smooth, consistent, with a sheen to it as well, that I've added the, now that I've added the butter. So I have, um, I have here a disposable piping bag, which you can buy from the shops. Best way to get the batter into the bag, use a container that allows you to use both hands. Let it all fall in there. I'm going to use these individual Savaran moulds. These are uh, Teflon coated so they're non-stick. Take your batter mix, twist the bag, a pair of scissors, cut. Now that batter is ready to pipe into the moulds. I just want to go halfway up the mould. That's three times round and then twist. And as you can see, the batter itself is just finding its own level there. And last step now, put them onto a tray, leave them in a warm place, 22, 24 degrees, so around room temperature, just so they prove they'll start to rise. And when they've doubled in size, they're ready to pop into the oven to cook. So next, I'm going to start with the syrup. This is going to be used to soak the rum baba in when it's cooked. First, I'm going to add the caster sugar, place it into the pan. It doesn't matter really what order you add it in. This is some dark rum. I prefer to use uh, bottled water for this. Sometimes the water from the tap can have a strange taste to it. And last, I've got an orange. I just need to take a peeling of the orange. Lemon as well. And last, half a vanilla pod. So I'll cut this. Small sharp knife along the length of the pod, scrape the seed out and then into the syrup. So pan onto a moderate heat, I'm going to bring that up to a simmer just so it dissolves the sugar. Let the vanilla infuse along with the zest and then the syrup's ready to use. I'm just tasting that now to make sure that there's enough rum flavour coming through and also I can already taste the essence from the zest and the vanilla. That's the sign it's ready to take off the heat, place it to the side and let it rest. So that's the, the batter risen, ready to go into the oven. So we've preheated the oven to 180, centre shelf. Make sure they're evenly spaced apart. Set your timer for 10 minutes. So that's the rum babas cooked. Just let them cool down for a minute or two, but easier to take them out of the mold while there's still a bit of heat in them. 
just take a grip with your finger and thumb, just gently pull it out onto the wire rack. Next stage is to soak the babas. Okay, so next I'm just going to strain the syrup. It makes it easier to work with when you're soaking the babas. Make sure that your syrup is at the right temperature. Too cold and it doesn't absorb the syrup, the baba doesn't absorb it. Too hot and it tends to break the baba down. So around 80 degrees is fine. Take a tray, place it under the wire rack, take the baba, drop it in. Push down with your spoon gently. Flip it over. Count to 10. 10 seconds is enough. You can see the baba itself, it's starting to increase in size as it soaks up that syrup. That's it ready there, okay. Just give it a quick uh, pinch with your fingers, you can see it springs back into shape. So what I've got here is some syrup left over. Uh, there's no need to throw that away. Just pass that again through the sieve, just in case there's any of the sponge and any of the baba mixture floating in there. Pass it through the sieve, let it cool down, store it in the fridge, and you can use it again at another date. So next step, we're gonna take some rum with a pastry brush. Just apply a little over the top and around the edge, around the sides of your baba. If you wanna enhance the presentation, you can glaze the outside of the baba with something like an apricot jam. Just brushed around, it gives a nice sheen to it. So we're gonna whip some cream for the baba, using a hand whisk again. Just uh, take your time at constant speed and slowly the cream starts to thicken up. Best way to avoid it from splitting is to make sure the cream is cold out of the fridge, okay? And as it starts to thicken, then I'm going to add a little castor sugar, half a teaspoon. You've got to use castor, the granulated, um, the coarseness doesn't dissolve into the cream itself. So final whisk, you can see it's starting to thicken now. Don't want to over whip it. You over whip it, it's going to split and once that happens you can't bring it back. You should be able to pick it up with a spoon, it should be nice and firm and uh, should set up proud like that. Okay, so I'll take some of my whipped cream, drop it into the centre, we'll select some raspberries and then arrange nice whole even sized berries all the way around. And to finish this, take a little icing sugar and with the spoon tap a little over the top. So there you have it, classic rum baba. A very simple dish to prepare and make. Great to serve for a summer evening pudding. You've got the great flavours from the rum and the exotic vanilla with the zest from the orange and the lemon, complemented with fresh raspberries.